Americans say they are a Christian nation under one God, and as of recent, their Christian heritage has gone lost due to modernism. But, neither Christ, God, nor monotheism play any role in the symbolism, names, murals and statues of government buildings, new world. The primary object of American public buildings is a goddess named Columbia. The seat of government is Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. If the U.S. were a Christian nation, it would be under the jurisdiction of Jesus, not Columbia. I make no statement on whether this should or shouldn't be. I'm pointing out a split in what Americans believe America to be and what it actually is. This figure is called Lady Columbia. She stands on top of the Salt Lake City and County building. Notice one arm stretched upward. According to Wikipedia, the building was originally constructed by Freemasons between 1891 and 1894 to house offices for the city and county of Salt Lake. This is the Goddess of Liberty before she was put atop the Texas State Capitol. Goddess Liberty and Lady Liberty are the same figure as Lady Columbia, but official sources are shy to tell you this. Both the Liberty Goddess and Columbia were often depicted with sword to the ground and the other hand reaching upward. You will soon learn why they shy away from openly telling you what this stuff is about. There's an article in Smithsonian Magazine that all but admits that Lady Liberty is modeled after Lady Columbia. There are even coins from the 1700s that call Columbia Goddess Liberty, the same name later given to Lady Liberty. Did you know that Star Spangled Banner was not always our national anthem? Prior to the 1930s, the semi-official anthem was Hail Columbia. This is a figure called Miss Freedom, atop the Georgia State Capitol. They don't call her Goddess Columbia, but she is. They don't call Miss Freedom Columbia, but she is. According to Wikipedia, Miss Freedom wears a Phrygian cap adorned with a star. It wears a robe and holds a torch in her right hand and a sword in her left. The torch is meant to represent truth or enlightenment, while the sword symbolizes authoritative armed liberty or enforced justice. When Goddess Columbia is not shown with a starry crown or wreath, she wears a Phrygian cap on her head. Here's a museum display of Columbia. We see the cap and as usual, one arm raised. She often holds a torch, because she's a light bearer, meant to bring enlightenment to humankind. Wikipedia tells us that Miss Freedom, atop the Georgia government building, was originally called Goddess of Liberty, and that the torch is a functioning mercury vapor lamp. In any case, the lady governing Georgia has all the signs of being Columbia, the Phrygian cap, the sword pointing downward, the torch lifted high, but they no longer call her that. There are many examples of this kind of relabeling to obscure the meaning of things. This is a mural inside the Massachusetts Capitol building, affirming that Columbia honors fallen soldiers. Again, one arm stretched upwards, the other clutching a sword, just like Goddess Liberty. This statue is officially called Lady Columbia, atop the Memorial Hall in Philadelphia, holding a wreath in her hands, one arm stretched upwards. Atop the state capital of Maine, we find the Lady of Wisdom, holding a torch in her upward stretched arm. With all these Columbia statues atop government buildings, they changed the names so that people wouldn't start asking the questions I'm asking here. The old State House of Connecticut was topped by a figure called the Genius of Connecticut. According to official sources, this is an allegorical winged female figure personifying the state. Hmm. Okay. This figure is no longer on the building, but now inside of it. Why not call it the Angel of Connecticut if it's winged? Word genius comes from the Latin word of the same name, meaning guardian deity or spirit, which watches over each person from birth or innate ability. Your genius, your superior talent at the game of chess could make you a world champion. Your amazing genius would also make you a genius. In plain English, the woman adorning the state capitol is a goddess or spirit. Atop the Capitol building of Pennsylvania, covered in gold, we have a figurine with one hand stretched upwards, holding a rod, similar to the one on the coin of the Liberty Goddess. She is called Miss Penn, the spirit of the Commonwealth. Official history teaches us that Americans of old were Bible-reading Christians who didn't tolerate idols or polytheism. This is obviously fake history. In reality, the most central buildings in America were dedicated to them, and still are. Whatever tops your government building, that's what your government is ruled by. It's not just decorative and not even just symbolic, but entirely intentional and of spiritual consequence. No wonder there's a disconnect between your everyday American citizen and the government.
This is the Montana State Capitol, topped by the Montana statue. It was previously named Lady Liberty. What's with all the name changes? This is a statue of the goddess Sears of Roman mythology. She stands on top of the state capitol building of Vermont. She's presumably a different character than Columbia, but shares with her and Lady Liberty the crown. However, Sears is not that far away from Columbia. Consider this statue called Alma Mater, or Mother Goddess, which stands in front of Columbia University in New York. According to Wikipedia, Alma Mater is an honorific title for various mother goddesses, such as Cirrus or Sibley. This is Columbia University hosting Cirrus. In America, we supposedly have a separation of religion and state. This, they say, is why there is no Christian symbolism in government buildings. However, governments are loaded with religious symbolism of another kind. Those all cowboys and Protestant pilgrims to America sure love their goddess. This is Wisconsin State Capitol. The statue in front is called Lady Move Forward in memory of the Columbian Exposition. The golden statue on top of the dome with one arm stretched upward is also called Lady Forward. Amusing. This is the Capitol building of South Carolina. For once, there's no Columbia statue to be seen. But then I realized, the capital city in which it stands, is called, Columbia. If the entire city is dedicated to Columbia, I guess you don't need a statue of her. This is Columbia triumphant atop USS Main National Monument. I found exactly one image of Columbia with the hand pointing down. I think I know why. This is at a US Navy facility in Honolulu, Hawaii. The Navy doesn't operate in the heavens, but in and underwater. So, their protective idol is pointing downwards. Oklahoma State Capitol used to have the lady atop its dome, but it's meanwhile been replaced with a Native American statue. Even old posters couldn't help but make sure to have one arm up, one down. What does it mean? I guess it means they wish to be viewed as being the connection between heaven and earth. This is the State Capitol building of Missouri. Atop a dome, there is a statue of Goddess Sears, with her right arm stretched out. I looked at every state capital of the USA. Not all of them have Columbia at their top, but many do. Others have Sears, Lady Liberty, Lady Freedom and other variations. In some towns, Columbia is on other buildings, not the capitals. Some buildings used to have a statue at their top, meanwhile removed. Isn't it interesting how similar all the capital buildings look? They are supposedly built by many different architects. They're supposed to be modeled after the US Capitol. But the building style isn't unique to the US. We have buildings like this across the world. This is St. Paul's Cathedral, London, said to have been built in 1675. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.